What's good, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Golden83, and I am here to do some general channeled messages for the collective, okay? Um, remember, you guys, these are, again, general messages, not personal. So take what resonates and pass the rest to the next, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and give just an honorable mention to the signs that this these messages as a whole are related to, okay? So we have Virgo, Gemini, Scorpio, and Aquarius, okay? Um, some may have one of these signs maybe in their birth chart somewhere. Um, so if it's not directly for sun, moon, or rising, um, then you possibly have one of the signs mentioned in your birth chart somewhere, okay? So, um, trying to kind of get through these. I try not to make the messages, you know, too long when they're channeled. Um, but nonetheless, Divine wants you to have these messages, okay? So, someone um, is a dog owner, okay? Um, with a little bit of issues or concerns, all right? Um, I had this dream like a few nights ago um, when I wrote these down. Um, it was about maybe like the 30th, a little bit, end of, end of March. Um, but it was a dream of a husky in a lab. And I've, I've had dogs that kind of uh, reminded me, I kind of saw them in the dream. Um, but my husky was a husky lab and I had a lab, full, full bred lab. Um, the lab, her name was Star and my husky um, Labrador mix, lab husky mix. Um, was rusty okay I talked I talk about them you know a little um, every now and again on the channel when it comes to pets okay um, but it was them in the dream and that they were left while a couple was gone for a few days okay not a full-fledged vacation but you know just kind of like a short you know like maybe an extended weekend kind of vibe or something um, maybe not too far away, maybe in a nearby city or something, um, for a few days, um, away from the house and you kind of centralized the dogs in one area. Um, I have done this before. Um, well, my family did at the time. Um, I was young. I was like a teenager when I had them and we put them in kind of like this room that was kind of like the laundry room storage area kind of vibe. Um, but we were gone. We were like out of state though. Um, and just a quick story before I go into y'all's, um, the crazy thing that happened with mines, and I can't remember if I told the story on here before, but, um, Rusty, which I had ever since I was like probably two, three years old. Um, that was like, that was my best friend. That was my buddy. And we had these, um, back then it was like around the time when I was about like 12 years old, we had, um, the house, the room that they were in, it had that, um, that hose, that have back hose that's for like dryers, um, on the wall and the hole that it was attached to, you could literally see outside. You could literally see outside. And so I don't know what happened. I don't know if some kind of critter or something got into the hose. Um, but y'all know it's kind of like pretty big. It's like around like this big, this like this wide of a hole um, of that hose. And he literally got into it. It was like on the, the bottom, like the baseboard of the floor. And he got into it just literally... <laughs> His body was halfway in it, like his paws and his head were in, and Star was in the room with him, like laying behind him and just kind of whimpering by the time we got home, and we we're like, what is going on? I'm um, thinking they had to go to the bathroom, and all of a sudden, all we see is just Rusty's, have his hind body <laughs> outside of the hose and his tail, you know, wagging, knowing that we were home. 
And so we got him out of it. He got out, but he was in there pretty snug. I don't know what he was protecting the house from, but it wasn't getting in um, with him being in that hole. So kind of um, close to you guys, because again, your dogs, um, whoever this is in reference to, the dogs were left in a centralized area. Um, but you left them and we did the same thing. We left them food. We left them water. So they definitely were, you know, being treated properly. Um, but no, you know, real treats uh, of any kind, but definitely enough food and water to last them while we were gone. And so you guys did the same thing. Um, but there was like this really huge rawhide bone that you left for the dogs to share. Okay, and I'm talking about one of those big, giant, long ones that you find like at PetSmart or something. Um, and they love that. They they did, you know, gnaw on it a bit. Um, again, the same thing. There was a hole somewhere in the room or a vent that the husky probably killed a rodent. Okay, your dog, whoever this is for, um, potentially, possibly killed a rodent or something that could have led to them now being a little bit sick, okay? If you're seeing them being like maybe a little bit lethargic, not as, you know, upbeat as they normally are, you might want to go ahead and, and take them to the vet, okay? Um, if you've returned, um, hopefully you threw away the rest of that, you, you either threw that bone away, but I'm feeling like you didn't. Um, and you took the other half of the bone, allowing them to go outside, which they're normally outside dogs. They do come in um, primarily, but um, you let them go outside, do their business, you know, play with them and go back to regular business. Once you got back, you threw that rawhide outside. Um, bugs can literally crawl into that and it, cause, it could cause more damage because they'll continue to gnaw on it. Um, so definitely throw it away. Okay. Um, that's the thing with rawhide bones too. Um, because I had a Yorkie, her name before her name was Sadie. She was like a Yorkie Shih Tzu mix. And she, we used to give her rawhide, like the ears, um, just those, not the full on bones all the time. And if it's like, it gets on the carpet lint gets on it when it starts looking kind of dirty and dingy just just throw it away because half of the time they'll gnaw at it and gnaw at it they get that lint and stuff in in their systems it's not a good look so definitely throw it away um and you know try not to have them traveling around with it like in the house or something okay um but they could be filling i think your lab is fine but i would take both of them um, if you don't see your lab, probably not touching it at all. It's because they're like, oh, I don't want that. Uh, <laughs> and it, it loses its luster after a while too, um, with like, you know, their drool and everything being on it, but it also loses that, um, that new scent of, of being something that they would be attracted to, to actually chew on. So definitely throw throw it away. It's it's not serving them any any good anymore. Okay, but definitely get that husky to the to the vet because they they may be um, acting a little bit indifferent. Also, maybe possibly not really even drinking anything um, that much either. Um, and so definitely get them to the vet. Okay, so let's get into the next message. Um, of someone wants to expand their skill set, okay, in, in something in particular, okay? Um, it could be something remotely close to construction, architecture, um, something that is uh, potentially labor intensive. Um, for others, it could be something that's like corporate office type or um, within a business, if you will, if you want to create some kind of service within a business that you have, um, that either you're the entrepreneur 
um, CEO, whatever the case may be, or it could be in um, a job that you're currently working, okay? So learning a new skill set is a win-win for you and the employer, okay? It's the employer, it saves them money and time from having to go and find somebody else um, to do the job where they can literally just go through you to do it. Um, of course, potentially a win-win for you. Not only do you become more marketable in the workforce, but you also end up, of course, getting a raise, hopefully. It, you know, so um, they could pay you for, uh, pay you uh, to take a course, but risk you going somewhere else, okay? That is the con, okay? And that's usually sometimes what happens. Um, let's say you get the skill set, you do the job that you need to do, um, you no longer need to really maintain anything anymore there. You get everything um, out of that job that you can. And, you know, with doing a project associated with gaining that skill set makes you more marketable somewhere else, okay? Whether it be a competitor um, or to open your own business that is revolving around that, okay? Um, they could hire someone with the knowledge and save money in that way instead of paying you to not only um, learn the new skill set, such as if it's like a certification of some sort, um, unless that's already built into your job, all right, um, where they um, automatically give some kind of funding for people to actually learn new skill sets, okay? But they hire someone else, you could end up having an answer to that person it's a whole thing with it, all right? And you may um, take the time to think on that level before making a firm decision about it, okay? Now, um, you could pay for it yourself. You can still possibly get reimbursed or see if you can get reimbursed by your job um, or through a tax deduction. Now, I am not um, a, a, an accountant of any kind. Um, but I have, you know, even you watching right now have probably done your own taxes through some kind of tax service like H&R Block or um, TurboTax, Jackson Hewitt. I'm not sponsored by any of those. But just saying, if you pay attention to when you do your taxes, it literally has job expenses um, as one of the credits. Um, but it does have to be a certain amount in order for you to really reap the benefits of receiving some of that money back. So kind of consider that as well. So of course you can, if you've already filed your taxes, you're already in some kind of certification that you're paying for. You're not going to be able to do any kind of amendment possibly this year. Um, because you took the courses this year, you paid for the courses this year, it would have to go on your taxes for next year, okay? Um, don't know if you guys know at all, but I do have an associate's in business, so I know a little bit about a lot, okay? Um, <laughs> so, but again, consult with, you know, your, your tax preparer, um, or an accountant um, and see if that would, you know, be beneficial to you. Find out what the amount is. If you do find out, feel free. I, I love learning stuff. Um, so you can feel free to put it in the comments below and let me know, okay, and spread the word to other people so that way they can, you know, reap the benefits as well, all right? Um, now, someone is being just slightly lazy per divine um, regarding the professional development. Okay. As far as, um, putting in the effort, you want more money, but you don't want to do the work. Okay. So if you're not willing to do the work, don't ask for more money. I'm just going to be serious with you. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's just clear cut and dry. Okay. Um, don't waste your time. Don't waste the time of the business. Just come in every day, do your job and call it a day. Okay, let the people who really want to move forward um, and thrive in the career that they're in, <coughs> excuse me, reap the benefits and then don't sit up here and be jealous of someone who's moving, um, you know, up the ranks because they're willing to put in the work and you're not. Okay, I will tell you this, the more you choose to decide not 
to um, grow and um, participate in, in projects or offer more assistance, you may start getting looked at as the weakest link, okay? Um, and if no one else is, you know, you're not trying to move up, not saying that they'll let you go, not saying that, but, you know, if you want more attention and you want people to recognize you, then you are going to have to step it up a bit, okay? So, with that being said, we're now into the last message from Divine as far as channel messages are concerned. And we have someone um, that wants to return to society after living off the grid, okay? Um, the person, I feel this energy of maybe... Um, old like a retiree of some sort from the military um so a military vet not sure what branch um potentially army maybe um or navy but somewhere in the military chose to move off the grid they do still have family that come to visit them where they are um, but it's very rare that you go and visit family unless it's an emergency or a special occasion, um, such as I get this vibe of someone graduating possibly, um, maybe a, a niece or nephew um, or a cousin that um, truly, probably even during the summer when they're off, come to visit you and spend time with you. Um, and so it would really mean a lot to them if you came. Um, so I, I don't think you'll have a problem with doing that, but being out on the grid now, I'm not even going to lie to you. I've watched like there's a show called building off the grid and there's been plenty of people that have like moved into the forest and just, you know, away from society. It, it looks like a dream to me <laughs> in a way, um, that I would love to do it. I don't think I could do it permanently, but um, it would be nice to kind of just go out and, and enjoy just peace and quiet and serene. Um, and that's why you went out there. Um, you don't want to give up what you've built. Um, it'll still kind of be kind of like a retreat in a way um, if you were to return back to society. Um, so still keep it um, for those moments where you may kind of, you know, I would say gingerly pace yourself getting back into society um, because just because you've been mostly around family, that's familiarity. Um, maybe you have some friends um, that you talk to um, occasionally um, who have not been living off the grid, but come and visit you. Um, and so maybe start, you know, considering um, visiting with them a little bit more so um, to get you kind of adapted back to, you know, hearing certain sounds and things like that. I, whenever I hear stories about military and definitely on TV sometimes that I've watched and just seen how PTSD really does affect um, those in the military, depending on, you know, what you did or what your position was um, in, in the military, um, hearing loud sounds, definitely if people live close to traffic, um, especially like inner city and things like that, you just might want to, you know, slowly, gradually bring yourself back. Okay. Um, if you can't stay with family, maybe a, a hotel stay, um, for like maybe two or three days, um, just to see how, you know, you react to it. All right. Um, cause me personally, I live somewhat, you know, in the city, um, in a way I hear the train all the time. The thing that I primarily love the most is like, sometimes when it is quiet, I can hear like the birds chirping, um, owls, um, which is very soothing. Of course I'm an earth sign. So of course I don't mind it, but, um, constant like banging and things like that. Um, there's even a such thing as apartment PTSD and I live in an apartment and I want a house so bad. <laughs> it's part of my five year plan. Um, but, um, even for me myself, so I can kind of understand where you guys, um, are coming from and what you may be dealing with in that sense of, you know, living. Um, and so 
just slowly bring yourself back. I would not rush into it because um, there could be certain things in, you know, considering um, whatever kind of work that you do, if you um, are um, doing something that's more so freelance um, worthy, um, if that's still the speed that you want to have, can you really enjoy doing that, being back in society? And um, just trying to take those little things that you wouldn't take into consideration prior now before making your final decision. Not saying you should stay, not saying you should go off the, you know, stay or go back into society. It's all really um, up to you. Um, but take those little tiny things into consideration and just do it gradually before you make that final decision, okay? So with that being said, um, I think that's all that I have for the collective um, when it comes to channeled readings. Um, just a quick note, things are getting out slowly um, as it comes to readings for myself. Um, the month of March was definitely um, very mentally and emotionally busy um, for me, um, along with working during the day. So really spending more time centering myself a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, and um, dealing with things for my shop and reorganizing. Um, and so it was definitely something that was needed during the much of month of March, um, very much so. And then April uh, coming into tour season um, a little bit. Um, and so kind of preparing for that as well. Um, but monthly manifestations will be coming out soon um, on top of a few other readings um, sparingly. So uh, a few changes, but hopefully nothing too dramatic. So um, definitely collective. I always appreciate all of you. Um, and so until next time, peace.